welcome back. We're going to take a look at phase changes. So we're going to look at the three states of matter, solids, liquids, and gases. And we know that all three of these phases are interchangeable. We can go in between all three of them. So the major differences between solids, liquids, and gases are how the particles are arranged. So solids have particles that are close together, closely packed. They are vibrating in space, barely moving, and they have a fixed volume and a fixed shape. Liquid particles are a little bit more spread out. They're also moving faster than solids, and they have a fixed volume, but no fixed shape. So if you have your cup of water, the water will take the shape of your cup. It doesn't have a fixed shape, but it does have a fixed volume. And then gases are very spread out. They're also moving very quickly, and they have no fixed shape and no fixed volume. They take the shape and the volume of their container. So let's look at how we can move in between these phases. So again, we have solids, liquids, and gases. And we can easily move in between all three of these phases. So moving from solids to liquids, of course, you probably remember is melting. Coming back from a liquid and turning into a solid is called freezing. Going from a liquid into a gas is boiling or evaporation. Changing from a gas back into a liquid is known as condensing. Changing from a gas into a solid is called deposition. Like a gas is depositing into a solid. And changing from a solid back into a gas is known as sublimation. And let's take a deeper look at some of these phase changes. Let's just think about water for a second. H2O and H2O. If I'm going from liquid water into a gas, we know that's called boiling. But what's happening on the molecular level? Our particles are going from being somewhat spread out, moving somewhat quickly, to being very spread out and moving a lot faster. So in order for a liquid to turn into a gas, there had to be an input of energy or heat to enable those particles to gain energy and spread out. So this had to have been an endothermic change because water had to gain energy in order to turn into a gas. Going back the other direction, gaseous water turning back into liquid water, our gas particles went from being very spread out to being closer together moving slower. So going from gas to a liquid, there had to have been energy given off. So that would be an exothermic change. Let's look at solid water or ice changing in to liquid water. Again, our particles are very, very, very close together, barely moving in a solid. And in a liquid, they're more spread out, they're moving more quickly, they would have more energy. 
So in order for solid water to turn into liquid water, there had to have been some sort of energy gain. There had to have been some heat or energy introduced into the system. And you know that if you leave a cube of ice on your table, it's going to melt because your ice cube is at room temperature. It's warm. It's too warm for that ice to stay solid. So as soon as heat is introduced, it will turn back into a liquid form. So that is an endothermic change. If I want my liquid water to turn back into a solid, to turn back into ice, some of that energy has to be let out of the system. So that would be an exothermic change. Remember, exothermic means that energy is exiting the system. Endothermic means that energy is entering the system. And then let's also look at solid water turning in to gaseous water. Again, our particles are really close together, barely moving. And when they turn into a gas, they now have a lot more energy. They're more spread out, moving quickly. So in order for that change to happen from a solid to a gas, there has to be an input of energy. So it's an endothermic change. Energy had to go into that system. Going back in the other direction, going from gaseous water to solid water, there had to be some sort of release of energy. Our particles that were full of energy moving around quickly have now become particles that are close together, barely moving. So energy had to exit the system. So this would be an exothermic change. So just to review, our three phase changes are solids, liquids, and gases. The major differences between them are how their particles are arranged. We can easily go in between all three phases, and we can very reasonably predict whether the change is endothermic or exothermic based on what is happening at the molecular level. If you have any other questions about this, please leave a comment. If you want to see more examples, you can leave a comment as well. If you have any other questions involving any other chemistry topics, take a look at some of my other videos. Thank you for stopping by.